has been arrested. Police believe she was involved in a road rage gunfire. A couple of teenage brothers were shot at on the way to school this morning, police tell us. It happened around 840 as the boys were headed down East Butler Road in Malden. Police say 22-year-old Amber McCole Reese fired several shots at the teens who were in another car. The teens were not harmed, but their father says it was a close call. They confirmed that there are no uh, bullet holes in the vehicle. And there, there are clearly no bullet holes in my, in my boys. Um, but thank God they're a bad shot. I mean, if you can't hit a, a, a minivan at point blank, thank you God that these lunatics were a bad shot. Police say Reese was arrested at Ridge Road in Greenville later today, and tonight she has been charged with attempted murder. Now to breaking news out of Nashville, Tennessee. Country music legend Loretta Lynn has been taken to the hospital after suffering a stroke. According to her website, she is responsive. She is expected to make a full recovery, we're told. Loretta Lynn is best known for her 1960s classic hits, Coal Miner's Daughter and You Ain't Woman Enough. We will, of course, keep you up to date on all of these breaking news stories on air and on the WYFF4 mobile app. Some weather for you now and a quick look at what the wind and the rain did last night in Malden. Trees and other debris scattered all over. This is damage on Shade Crest Drive there in Malden, and it was a day of cleanup. Chief Meteorologist John Sessrich is here. And, John, with the storms now behind us, we're talking about cooler temperatures, right? Yeah, even almost downright cold, and especially in the mountainous areas, Carol and Michael. Yeah, and those thunderstorms that rumbled across the area with that storm system, very isolated, uh, just a lot of wind, and for the most part, uh, there was only two reports of wind damage. One where you saw the damage from our video, and then really that was about it. One in Anderson, and one also around Inman, and also around the Malden area. But look what happened this evening. As, as upper level lows to our northwest, we continue to rotate in these showers this evening into the upstate. Then once the sun went down, so did the showers. Now they're mainly confined to the Tennessee, North Carolina line, but look what's showing up. Yeah, a little bit of pink and white. That's right, rain and snow possible only in the highest elevations of the mountains of North Carolina along the Tennessee line and above probably 5,500 feet. So Mount Mitchell, Grandfather Mountain, and uh, maybe uh, even Beach Mountain could see a little bit of snow tonight and also again Saturday night into Sunday morning. When you wake up though, a little bit of clearing before our next storm system comes in, but it's gonna be downright chilly when you wake up. Now back to you, Michael and Carol. John, thanks, we'll see you later on. Instead of addiction tonight among new heroin users, three out of four say they abuse prescription opioids before they turn to heroin. That's from the Centers for Disease Control. The CDC also says the number of opioid prescriptions sold has more than quadrupled since 1999. I have more on the drive to educate those who write the prescriptions and those who use them. Yeah. Life is dishing up something sweet for Brian these days. A management job and a chance at life free of addiction. Car accidents and a back injury started the painkillers when he was a teenager. And when I turned to a doctor and told him that, hey, my body's liking these, he took me off of everything. He said by law he was scared that, you know, he's keeping my addiction going, so he stopped. I went in through massive withdrawal, and then I went to a buddy of mine who said, hey, I can get these from a guy down the road. And these turned into multiple prescriptions, doctor shopping, heroin, I mean, just the full spectrum. In the face of more stories like Brian's, the Centers for Disease Control published guidelines for doctors on prescribing opioids. Among the highlights, opioids should not be the first line of treatment. Discuss the benefits and risks of opioids with patients. Use no more than needed and reevaluate the pain in four weeks. The guidelines came out in March of 2016, but at the recent Prescription Drug and Heroin Summit in Atlanta, the CDC rolled out more resources for doctors to talk to their patients about opioids. So which one would most people choose? Including interactive simulations of patients and doctors talking about pain and remedies. We know that state medical societies are offering more and more courses. Uh, so that is a critical piece of this, and physicians are enhancing their education and training. And there's education enough for everyone on pills, on detox, on recovery. I always said that before I got into recovery that, you know, AA and NA is for quitters. No, it's for the people that want to survive, the people that want to thrive and stop just doing the day-to-day -day of that wretched life. Instead, choosing a new, full, sweet life. 
Some of the experts we talked with said it's a good idea for patients to be familiar with the new opioid guidelines as well. Now, if you'd like to see them, just go to the cdc.gov and look up guidelines for prescribing opioids. New Hampshire police tell us Preston Thorpe has been arrested. You may remember this case. There was a nationwide manhunt for him because of an extremely powerful drug. Police believe he was in possession of carfentanil. That's a synthetic opioid, very strong. They say he was taken into custody at a hotel in Manchester, New Hampshire. Police say an anonymous tip uh, caller tipped them off, and they say a search of his apartment turned up trace amounts of carfentanil. That drug was created to tranquilize large animals, even elephants. Officials say it's 100 times more potent than fentanyl, 5,000 times stronger than heroin. The drug has been linked to three overdose deaths just in New Hampshire. Happening now, 42-year-old David Jerome Butler tonight remains on the run. Deputies say he shot inside the Yanfeng manufacturing plant this morning, injuring two people. Deputies have not said if those two people were shot, just that they have non-life-threatening injuries. Butler has a criminal history, burglary, possession, voluntary manslaughter. But we spoke with his wife this afternoon who says that man is not the one she married. She says he is kind, lovable, and nonviolent. She says deputies told her Butler did not shoot anyone, instead dropped the gun, which then fired. Because I just talked to him at 4 o'clock this morning. We were on the phone laughing about what I was going to cook for breakfast when he came home. <laughs> Anyone with information about his whereabouts is asked to call 68 Crime or the Lawrence County Sheriff's Office. Now to Oconee County, where we learn more today about the death of a woman reported missing last month and later found in a storage building. The coroner says Rebecca Cawthon had been shot several times, including to the head and chest. Deputies say her husband, Lee Cawthon, came in and admitted to killing her. The coroner says Rebecca Cawthon died April 17th or the 18th. Lee Cawthon tonight faces several charges, and they do include murder. A U.S. Navy SEAL was killed in Somalia. It's the first U.S. military combat death there in more than two decades. The Navy SEAL was killed during an operation against the extremist group Al-Shabaab. Two other service members were wounded. The operation took place yesterday near the town of Baril. U.S. troops are in the African nation to advise and assist Somalia's army. The attack comes as U.S. troops are returning to Somalia for the first time since 1993. You may recall 18 special forces died fighting militias in Mogadishu, a battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. To Charleston now, where police have a mystery on their hands after they found a severed human foot. Police say they found it inside the shoe Monday at the Charleston Marina. That's according to an incident report. It was sitting on the dock for six days before it was reported to police. The coroner has not connected it with any missing person or accidents. If you have any information about this case, you are asked to call police. State Representative Harold Mitchell of House District 31 told us this afternoon he is stepping down. He says he made the decision after visiting with several doctors for headaches, stress, blood pressure issues. Mitchell says he's stepping away and giving himself time uh, to focus on his health and his family. You could soon pay more at the pump to raise money to repair South Carolina's crumbling roads. Today, a legislative panel tentatively agreed to increase the state's gas tax by 12 cents over six years. It essentially adopts the Senate's version on the gas tax without an inflation factor. House members said they could not approve letting the tax rise with inflation after six years. The panel of House and Senate members is trying to come up with a plan that can receive a supermajority vote in both chambers to override Governor Henry McMaster's promised veto. Happening now, if you're headed out the door, a traffic alert tonight. This is complicated. A live look here at the Gateway Project from our Woodruff Road Skycam. All kinds of detours tonight. First of all, traffic on the I-85 northbound exit is detoured all the way into 385 southbound. The right lane of 385 South is closed from Woodruff to Butler Roads, and so is that southbound ramp. On 385, the ramp onto I-85 South is closed. Told you it was a lot here. And finally, up near Pelham Road, the left lanes of I-85 South are closed right now. Construction on the Gateway Project began in February of last year. It'll continue on until 2020, and that entire project will transform the whole 385-85 interchange in Greenville County. Under recall tonight, beef sold in the Carolinas. It may be tainted with a potentially deadly E. coli bacteria. That's according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The agency announced the recall by Marcho Farms of Souderton yesterday. The recall includes five to 600 pounds of boneless veal, ground veal, beef and pork produced between April 11th and April 14th. The bacteria can cause diarrhea, dehydration and abdominal cramps and can even cause kidney failure. 
A live look here as we cover some breaking news just into our newsroom here. A developing story, a person is dead after a shooting in Greenville County. Again, a live look here. Deputies said they responded to the D&D Mobile Home Park on Kearns Avenue just after 10 o'clock tonight. Report of an intoxicated person lying in the road there. When they got there, they learned that person had been shot. The victim was pronounced dead there at the scene. Again, a live look here. The coroner has yet to identify that victim tonight. The Swamp Rabbit Trail tonight hosts to the largest independent 5K in the upstate. And the Interior Department hosts to the largest independent dog party. And live Super Doppler 4 HD showing rain showers coming in from the northwest and it's cold enough for the higher elevations along the Tennessee line. Look at that, a little bit of snow in the higher elevations. I'll be right back. Almost time. Excitement is growing in the horse racing world for tomorrow's Kentucky Derby. Uh, no horses, but tonight others were racing in Traveler's Rest. It was the GHS Swamp Rabbit 5K. WYFF News 4's John Lyon was there when 6,000 racers stepped up to the starting line. And they were off. About 6,000 runners, walkers, and kids riding in strollers. We're doing good. You're pushing and you're carrying. Oh, yeah. Gotta do what you gotta do, right? More are doing it every year. This ninth GHS Swamp Rabbit 5K and all its participants doubles the population of Traveler's Rest on race night. This is a community give back and we want people to come out and celebrate the trail and know that it's there and free to everybody. Free is the operative word. After paying $6 early registration, there's free food, free entertainment, and even free relief for sore muscles. It's a great course. They do a wonderful job uh, putting the race on, and it's six bucks. So me and my daughter can do it, and it's, it's, it's a nice thing. The weather wasn't necessarily a nice thing. Cloudy, breezy, and a little rain. It's great. I'd much rather a little rain than it be too hot. The popularity of events like this 5K is why Traveler's Rest is popping up on lists of places to go. Traveler's Rest is, is on the map. It's the coolest, one of the top 10 coolest small towns in America. It's one of the top 10 smallest towns in the uh, Southeast, I believe. Josh Cashman wasn't just top 10, he finished first, 16 minutes and 12 seconds. Maybe it was the superhero costume. John Lyon, WYFF News 4, Traveler's Rest. Or maybe it was the training. Today, the Interior Department of this country hosted its first ever Bring Your Dog to Work Day. Brace for the fun. The idea got started uh, by Interior Secretary Ryan Zink. He believes bringing dogs to work helps to boost morale. There's some evidence. So today, Zink met with around 80 employees who brought their dogs to work there at the Department of the Interior. Everyone had a chance to take a photo with the secretary, by the way, and his own pup, uh, a Havanese named Ragnar. Now, your live Super Doppler 4 HD weather forecast. Daylight satellite picture in the radar in the upper level low continues to spin up here in Tennessee, actually starting to lift up now to the northeast, and then all these little pieces of energy kind of rotate around that upper level low and spin across our area. Uh, this evening we had off and on showers, and now the showers are morally confined to the mountainous areas in live Super Doppler 4 HD, showing the few showers left, and then of course the showers now changing to snow in the highest elevation, well above 5,500 feet, right along the North Carolina, South Carolina line, and also in some of the higher elevations of the northern and central mountains of North Carolina, certainly possible. Uh, Grandfather Mountain, Mount Mitchell, uh, Beach Mountain could see a little bit of snow, not just tonight, but also another wave of moisture could come in tomorrow night into early Sunday morning. So as you can see, there's the snow <laughs> that's falling right along the west slopes of the North Carolina, Tennessee line. So again, this feels more like March outside, but talking about it for days that it was coming uh, instead of May, that's for sure as far as temperatures go. You can see how chilly it is, and then just rain showers all the way back into Knoxville, and then just a few sprinkles for the rest of the area. In the upstate, a couple of sprinkles in through Oconee County, the mountains of South Carolina back into Rabin County in northeastern Georgia, but really that's about it. For the most part, I think we're going to stay dry. And in fact, we'll probably see some breaks in the clouds, I think, in the upstate outside of the mountains, and then the clouds will increase tomorrow afternoon as another storm system comes in. Live shot in Town Square on this Friday evening in Lawrence, and it's chilly, currently 52 degrees, 52 also in Spartanburg and Newberry, also in Rutherfordton, 
Hendersonville, Anderson, Clemson, Abbeville. And that's it for 52, but 46 degrees in Franklin, also in Andrews and in Boone. It is cold outside. The highest, uh, highest elevations, it's already in the 30s. And still very breezy, if not windy conditions in many areas across the area. Humidity levels remaining very high. It's a chilly 55 in Columbia. Even pretty cool along the beaches, 61 degrees along the Grand Strand and Middle Beach. It's only 49 degrees in Atlanta. Wow, and there's the upper level low. Now that cold air is sinking, so it's only 47 in Cincinnati, 48 degrees currently in Nashville. So the upper level low is going to slowly pull away, but it's still going to influence us uh, tomorrow with some clouds. And another little piece of energy is going to come down the pike and produce some showers. Big ridge out in the middle part of the country, so 